All right, what's up, you guys? This is Devin again for another project, Sax How to Play. Now, a lot of times we see this girl playing on a little cartoon show, and this girl always jamming on a saxophone. This girl is Lisa Simpson. Lisa Simpson always plays that little Baker Street lick from um, uh, Baker Street. Uh, it's a song called Baker Street. And uh, basically on The Simpsons, Lisa Simpson, she plays this lick all the time. She's playing and I was like, hey, why don't I get on YouTube and I show everybody how to play it. So um, before or no, after I play it, show you how to play it, I'm going to give you a little information on the song. No matter of fact, I'll give you information now and tell you later. All right. Um, Baker Street, uh, wrote in 1978 by a guy named Jerry Gary Jerry. It's, it's with a G, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but he's not American, so uh, it's Jerry Rafferty. And um, the actual saxophone lick itself is being played by a guy named Raphael Ravenscroft. If I pronounced that correctly, guys. But uh, yeah, uh, he's um, a really good saxophone player. He's he got a nice, bright sound, but we're going to get on the playing right now. So. A little bit more history about the song and how it's changed from uh, the original. Um, on TV, you might see her playing saxophone. It might look like a tenor, but actually, the actual voiced over saxophone is a baritone saxophone. I have an alto saxophone, which is its baby cousin. Why? Because both the saxophones are in E flat, but I will be playing because this actually, uh, the alto saxophone is the actual recorded saxophone. An alto saxophone. That's the actual. And so um, that's the actual recorded saxophone, but um, the actual Barry itself is being played as Lisa Simpson. So I'll play both. So here is the here is the alto saxophone version. I'm gonna play it for you so you get the gist of it, and then I'll tell you the notes. essentially the same thing you could put that uh, variation on the end if you want to that's something like he plays but for the most part you want to play this no variation on the end but I'll show you how to play this part so um, what we're doing in the beginning is um, there's two different articulations for this beginning part. It's and then there's the gliss up. So the, the first one I'll do is the gliss up. Uh, so basically what you're doing with your saxophone here, you got your, your right hand, you got your left hand. If you know your concert D scale, no, excuse me, not D, it's actually um, F, concert F, but it's the D scale for the saxophone. So, you go, you're basically what you're doing is you're actually playing these notes as you're going up. So, you don't have to play all of them. The more you play, the more fuller the glissando sounds. Yes. But you do want to play it in time, so so when you're playing it, uh, you're playing all those notes consecutively. That's in slow motion, so so 
So that's pretty much what you're doing if you know that scale. So the notes are for the glissando. D, E, L sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. The next part is. That's a C sharp. That's a B. That's an A. That's another B. And this is C sharp. And another B. And then the next part is the same thing. Instead of going back to that uh, uh, B, you're going to you're going to play F sharp. So it's an A. That was the last note was an A, and this this final note is going to be an F sharp. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's just variations of of that. Um, but what really makes that sound like that is the, the saxophone's ability to actually play it like that. Play all the growls, whistles, and bells where they need to be played. So instead of you playing it like this, say if you're a beginner, you play it plain. But um, that first note is always a high D. So if you hear me, I'm not saying it. I'm inferring it. But that first note, it's your palm key. That's the high D. That's the, that's that's the, the second part. That's the A again. What I'm doing right there is playing with the G sharp. So I'm flicking the G sharp up to the A. So what 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 you're doing is just but you're not tonguing it. You're slurring it and you're what you're doing you're you're slurring it and you're playing it in time so it takes a little practice to get it when you want it to come out so the second part is uh, pretty much like the first part Basically, what makes this song, this song, or this lick, this saxophone staple, a saxophone staple, is the way it's played. The D is such a rich note on the saxophone, and the L sharp is such a good note. I love the L sharp, especially for resolving a, a, a passage. So, instead of playing, like I said before, like a beginner, like, you know, all that phasing, try to put some air behind it. Because this is a big saxophone sound. When you come in, and the, the way you get that, that's actually your bottom lip pushing against the reed a little bit to, to, to minimize the pressure at one specific point in time and then have it flood back out. So. in there that fat jazzy rock sound you want that in there why because that is the, the the feel of that genre that is the essence of that genre so you want that fat 
rock jazzy type sound going on. Uh, it's like a rock jazz crossover, but it's real still in your face. There's no dynamic contrast until the end of the note, which is a natural for almost every you know uh, genre. But basically, what you want to do is move that bottom lip, press it. Just when you practice and go. and then bring it up to that pitch. So when you play it, you can also flick it out. The flick out isn't, isn't as effective as the lip, but you don't want to lip everything your whole life because then it gets kind of lippy, everything you play, and then everybody's like, why is he bending everything? But bending and wobbling is like the forefront for saxophone players when you're playing rock music, especially when you got that jazzy sound going on in the background. So that's all mouth, but if I were to flick it out from the E to the F sharp. So it's okay. It's okay. And yeah, like I said, guys, I make mistakes, but when you're practicing, you're supposed to make mistakes. This is what I'm trying to preach to everybody. When you're practicing, you're supposed to make mistakes. I show on my, my uh, channel a more of a free type if I make a mistake it's okay why because I want you guys to make mistakes because out of mistakes become the most shiniest gems especially on the saxophone because saxophones you know you squeak all the time you're always squeaking and you're always all this bad stuff happens on the saxophone tonality wise when you're practicing I want you guys to know that even the best you know uh, even even somebody with a decent sound even somebody who already knows this makes mistakes so especially where you hear me make mistakes is where you need to watch out for mistakes and this is how I keep preaching this in every one of my videos especially my scale tutorials if you haven't looked at those but guys this is a good song to play especially if you're trying to get your chops up trying to get your sound up really put that thick sound out there because it's a solo jump off lick you know for especially if you know your uh your your d scale for the alto saxophone Like I said, I make mistakes. I want you guys to get that feeling of making a mistake and, and keeping going, especially, you know, but um, ASTW is always something to work on. So I'm not perfect, and I'm not I'm never going to say I'm perfect, and I'm never going to put a perfect video on YouTube. Why? Because everybody likes, everybody dislikes. It doesn't matter. I'm just here to teach you what I know by, based off my experience, and I want you guys to get the realness of actual practice and making mistakes, because that's what practice is, making mistakes and fixing them, and then birthing something somebody has never known. That's, what, probably, that's probably where growling came from. Because when I, um, that's actually part of this little uh, thing where you <laughs> bending that sound and getting that growly, that's the rock, that's the feel of this actual, this, these techniques came from people making mistakes. But I'm gonna end it off of that because I love, you know, you know, doing this thing, helping out people with the saxophone. But my name is Devin from Project Sax. And I will see you guys later, and I'm wishing you good sound.